were people really using it or did it just look really good when I was with the, you know, the reporter showing them my, my app, did people actually download it and play it? That's that again, the brand will know that we're going to say, okay, how many people were in Zepetto actually, you know, engaging with this, how many people were on the Minecraft server playing in that experience. That, that's the true measure of the success in my opinion. Hi there. Welcome to today's episode of Beam from Super League. I'm your host, Matt Edelman, the President and Chief Commercial Officer of Super League. I'm excited to introduce today's guest, Brad Foxhoven, founder of Evergame, a leading strategic consulting firm and gaming production company with a roster of some pretty impressive clients. Um, Brad, maybe give us a, a little bit of a, of a more descriptive intro and about what you do. Uh, well, you know, my roots are on the game production side. So, but for Evergame, we kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, we tilt toward the kind of emerging media and technology side, kind of born of the game space. So while we honestly have a core on game development, design, consultation, uh, ideation, um, we kind of start really looking forward to where the market's going, where technology is going with respect to not only the game market, but uh, anything that kind of has sort of interactive entertainment components uh, applied to it. You know, it's interesting. For the past several years, it's been reported accurately, of course, that the video game industry is bigger than the film business and bigger than the music business and bigger than the sports industry. I think it might have caught up to television, but not quite. Uh, it is the fastest growing of all of those areas. But I heard another amazing statistic just today that video games as an industry are now as big as the entire enterprise software business. But, but just, is there a pivot point? Is there something that has happened in the past two years, five years, maybe a little further back that tipped the scales and started to create that acceleration? Well, I, I look back when multiplayer really took hold over Xbox Live and, and all sorts of other platforms, when you could share the experience with your friend who's not in the same room or with anybody that just shares a similar interest in, in the game, that's really the moment it took hold. That's really where suddenly you, you're not bound by a location or demographic or geographic, I mean, it was, you were completely free to engage with whomever you wanted to, and they shared an interest in that, in that experience alongside you, whether it was a competitive experience, whether it was a collaborative experience. That really is what it really was the, the moment that everything shifted. You know, even in a recession, one of the last things, the, the drop is gaming. If anything, it, it goes counter to a recession. People will spend more money on games because they get a bigger return of value of entertainment engagement than they would in other forms of, of kind of passive entertainment. So few brands have chosen to have a presence in more than one platform, especially at the same time. I would imagine that might make it a little harder to measure, you know, is my presence in platform A helping versus my pre presence in platform B. Um, but it's also the case that you know, the experience in each has to be different based on what that, that community enjoys. Do you look at those and, and say, hey, look, they, you know, they did what they should have in each, or did they miss an opportunity in, in your opinion in one or the other? Um, it, again, it depends on how many people were really play. I mean, it's, you know, what people do like VR and AR, like, oh, look at my AR app. And you know our background, right? I, yeah, I had background big time on that in that space. Were people really using it, or did it just look really good when I was with the you know the reporter showing them my my app? Did people actually download it and play it? That's that again. The brand will know that. We're gonna say, okay, how many people were in Zepetto actually, you know, engaging with this? How many people were on the Minecraft server playing in that experience? That that's the true measure of the success, in my opinion. Because if there's no one there, it doesn't even matter how great it looks. So. We're thinking of of adding a regular segment to the to the pod here called stuff that doesn't make sense, and um, I thought to add that today specifically because you are the guest. Is there anything that comes to mind where you look at what's happening in the space, either platform, brand, a decision that's been made, and it just is something that doesn't make sense? I'll go I'll go edgy and I'll bite the hand that feeds me right a little bit. Uh oh. So okay, the part of Roblox's business that doesn't make sense is their their way of you know their their percentage on the back end right how they are doing their rev share to creators to developers to anybody else out there 
Um, we all know that you're, you know, Roblox is rolling out some amazing technology, amazing things from the platform. But as a creator, as a developer, as a designer, you're not motivated to use those tools or resources because there's no return on that investment. I'm not going to make money. I'm not going to spend my time and, and get 20 cents on the dollar. It's not worth my time. So, you know, it's one of those things where if they start to unlock that back in, more people will come. So if you're, you know, the brands, if you're a, a Nike, a, a Vans or whomever, you know, you have this thing where you say, well, I, I want to sell a, a virtual shoe. I want to sell a virtual hat. And they're making 20 cents on the dollar. They're thinking, well, wh why am I doing this? Why am I promoting this? It's not worth my time to make that back as a creator coming in, as a designer, um, an artist. Um, they've got to unlock that because if it's not, you know, the big brands, the big creators, the big developers are, are never going to really truly um, flex in the way they can if they don't have uh, uh, some bigger share of the back end. Brad, thank you very much. It was uh, terrific you. talking with you today and um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to have you back uh, sometime in the future. Sounds good. Thanks, Matt. Thank you again to Brad for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the episode and please remember to follow us and like us wherever you hear your podcasts. Stay tuned for the next one.